Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for RC Hibbler's Engineering Mechanics Statics textbook. So we have this problem from chapter two, which is asking, find the magnitude of the projected component of the force along the pipe AO, where we have this diagram here. Um, we have this force F pulling down on the pipe, um, which is in line with kind of rope AB here. The question's asking us to find the magnitude of the component of that force acting along AO. Uh, so let's just kind of show what it's, it's asking us to find. It's effectively asking us to find this, right, where this, uh, this red vector that I've, I've shown here is a component of force F. Um, and you might look at this and think, well, find the magnitude of it well we can want we it, it can be whatever we want it to be right it, it, it can take a small value but still act along AO it can take a very large value but still act along AO um, let's say it, it looked like this for example well its complement its complement uh, component would look something like this uh, which just maybe I should draw it to here really uh, uh, and so, okay, we have a you know a component of the force acting along AO, uh, and it's massive. Uh, or it could be small. It could be anything we want it to be. Like I say, um, let's just kind of uh, so to to help us understand this, I've created a simulation here in GeoGebra, um, where we have this this force F acting along AB, and we have this component force acting along AO, and like I say. We can, it can even be negative if we want it to be, it might be safe to assume then that what the problem is asking for here really is the value of FAO, of this FAO component, where the angle with its complement is 90 degrees. So it's kind of, um, oh, it won't land on 90 degrees for me. Oh well, who cares? Um, so we, we kind of have uh, a little bit of a spoiler here that, that our... Um, answer is going to be in the region of 243. Um, but let's go ahead and solve this. So let's just move back over to OneNote here. OK, I'm just going to delete these again in a way. OK, so let's go ahead and solve this. Uh, might make sense, first of all, to solve for the angle between AO and uh, force F. Let's call this angle theta here. In order to do that, we can make use of the, these um, ideas that I've shown in the bottom left here uh, of the dot product and the dot product angle formula. Um, so first to solve for the dot product, we're going to need the x, y, and z components of, of uh, in this case, AO and AB, understanding that we can kind of treat AB just as F here since they're both in line with each other. So uh, AO, the X component of AO looks like it is zero, doesn't act in the X direction. Uh, the Y component here looks like it acts, um, AO looks like it acts in the negative Y direction by four. AOZ looks like it acts uh, six down, so minus six. Uh, AB, its X component looks like it acts 4 in the X direction. ABY, uh, let's have a look. Um, looks like it acts 5 minus 4 in the Y direction, so 1. Uh, and ABZ. <clears throat> looks like it acts six down as well. OK, uh, we can use this then to solve for the dot product of these two vectors. So we have um, AO dot AB. This is going to be equal to zero times four. Well, that's zero. Uh, minus four times one, that's minus four. And minus six times minus six, well, that's 36, which is uh, equal to 32. Uh, when looking at our dot product angle formula, it's evident that we'll also need the magnitudes of these two vectors. So uh, we can solve for the magnitude of AO here. 
that's going to be equal to the square root of uh, 4 squared plus 6 squared, uh, which is equal to, uh, let me just check my notes here, that is equal to 2 root 13, 2 root 13. Uh, AB, magnitude of AB, that's going to be equal to square root of 4 squared plus 1 plus 6 squared. Uh, which is equal to root 53. Okay, so we can say then, uh, therefore, theta, using our dot product angle formula here, is equal to the inverse cos of 32 over uh, 2 root 3, 2 root 13, sorry, uh, times root 53. Which, when we bung in our calculator, we take a value of 52.44 degrees. Okay, so we're looking for that component FAO. We can diagrammatize this. Uh, so let's just draw F. Uh, so this is our force F here. I'll label them up in a sec. Um, this is our kind of complement. Uh, and this is what we're looking for, FAO. Let's just add some geometry to this as well. So we understand now, having solved for, for theta, that this angle is 52.44 degrees. Eesh, my handwriting. Let's just write it outside the triangle just so it's clear. Fifty-two point four four degrees, and we have this right angle here. And let's label these up. So we've got a, a, a force of magnitude four hundred here, and what we're looking for is FAO. So uh, evidently, we can solve for FAO using trigonometry here. Um, we have our hypotenuse, it's 400. We're looking for our adjacent, it's FAO. So uh, we're, we have the hypotenuse, we're looking for the adjacent. It might make sense then to use cos, since the cos of an angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we'd say, therefore, uh, the cos of 52.44 here <clears throat> is equal to FAO over 400. Uh, therefore, F. AO, multiplying both sides by 400 here, is going to be equal to 400 cos 52.44, which when we bung in our calculator gives us a value of 243.8. Uh, and let's just add newtons in there just to be clear it's a force. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions or comments about that problem, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.